from here, it, uh, upwards is good. Anything below is bad, okay? Good luck to the both of you. Touch them up. Mohamed Wazim against Ganegan Lopez, live from Caesars Palace here. It's returned to Rumble 2. And Wazim, as we said, rebuilding after falling short in that IBF title fight. It was a good fight, though. Dropped Matalin in the 11th round, but it wasn't enough to get the points win on the night. Two of the cards had him just a point behind at the end. And maybe it was just a little bit too early in his career. This yeah. Because even, even this fight, this early in his career, this fight's an ambitious fight. Yeah. A former world champion. He might, he might, what is his 11th fight? But it's a difficult situation, isn't it? After you have your first world title fight, it doesn't go your way. What do you do next? Well, you've got to go in against a quality operator, and that's exactly what he's doing. And it shows the confidence him and more importantly his team have in him. Yeah. I mean Lopez, 37 years of age, but still looks in very good fighting shape. Been a professional 16 years. That is a long time in this game. That's nice air from Mazin, but look at the Lopez. In true Mexican style, always willing to fire back. I think we had uh, Fahed Albushi making his debut this evening, 23 years of age. He was six years of age when Ganik and Lopez first <laughs> stepped in as a pro. <laughs> Halfway through round one, Ganik and Lopez lands that right hand to the body. Good jab there as well from Lopez. Just catching Mazim as he's walked forward. Hands a little bit low. That's better, it's a good right hand. Just with the south ball, you've got to make sure that front foot, that left foot's on the outside when, you, when you're up against the south ball. Just so when you attack, you have, you have the advantage there for that right hand through the guard. Otherwise, you've got to turn the body, it just takes a, bit, takes a bit more time away from you. He's been able to do a huge amount of clean work in this opening round, Mohamed Wazim, but he is a knockout artist. Well, good left hook there on the temple, just caught Lopez. As Lopez tried to escape to the right. Caught him with a heavy right hand as well. Oh, lovely left hand there from Lopez. A cracking shot. And again there, good bit of work. What's it, you already see already, what's going to be... Oh, good jab there from... Wazim, what's going to be important for Wazim is what he does after he throws the shot. Because Lopez is always going to fire back. You see it there. Whether you land or not, he's going to throw, he's going to throw back. So you have to be careful where you are and what you're doing after he's throwing the shots. Well, Wazim there, throwing the left hook. Lopez gesturing to the referee, but it was to the back of the head. Lopez doing very well to stifle those heavy hands of Wazim in that opening round. See the, the right hook there from, or well left hook, I say, from the south ball stance here from Lopez. Catch him, Wazim flush and just hit back on his heels. He took it well to his credit, but it's a warning signs that when you're throwing your shots, you've got to, something's going to come back with this Mexican. Corners, 10 seconds. Seconds out, round two. Second round then, referee calls them in. Now, Wazim has fast hands and he has fast feet as well, so you yeah. get in and out of the target quite comfortable, but when you've got a guy with experience like Lopez, it takes more than just speed. You've got to be an intelligent, you've got to be a thought behind it. You have to know what you're going to do rather than just use that, that athleticism and be on autopilot, which he probably does a lot, a lot with him because he's, you know, he, is, he is athletic. 
good though from him there. He's trying to walk on Lopez. It's quite busy though, Lopez, isn't he? And in that first round, you've got Lazin just trying to faint, just trying to yep. sense that opening, and Lopez not really giving him anything. Good quick hands there though from Wazim. Nothing really landing, but just up in the work rate. I think he needs a, when he comes forward, rather than come back, just arc around the body a little bit more. And then retreat from the side. And if Lopez turns, you can pop him with a with a straight shot. Just keep him turning so he can't throw back. Defence there from Razim. Not there though. I think he's learning pretty quickly in this fight that he can't switch off. Well, he's looking like he wants to tough it out a little bit, doesn't he, with, uh, with Lopez? So maybe expecting a 37 year old to slow down a bit. Yeah, but Lopez just popped in a nice little jab there. It's there, that, he didn't get caught there, but it's there, just standing a bit tall, too close to the target after he's thrown his shots. But he's no use to having things come back. Oh, nice right hook there from Lopez. Got to stay busy now. There's Mazzini had a good start of the round for me, but Lopez coming right back into it. Well, obviously, no belts on the line this evening, but Lopez still competitive, still fighting for a lot of the. WBC Latino and South American belts won his last bout and won the Latino flyweight belt in July. I suppose he was in a similar position to Wazim where he loses a world title and wonders what to do next, but boxing very well here. He just take a few shots there, just a few seconds ago, mind off Wazim. Nice little. Uh, Three or four shots on target. And around two. Mexican who's coming to win. Uh, bearing in mind. Seconds out, round three. Bell goes for round three, which is only the 64th round of his professional career. That's crazy. Isn't it? So the 10 fights in, seven of those have finished within the distance. Right hand there from Mazin. And going back to that, you, as a trainer, you can't tell your man not to finish the fight because you don't want to take those risks. But really, at some point, you are going to have to learn, particularly as you said, if you want to get to and maintain world level. Yeah, of course. Again, there, you know, it's, a, it's, a good, it's a good success there. Mazin lands some nice shots and then just squares himself up a little and has to take a little sneaky little left hand there off. Off Lopez. Nice left again from Lopez. Lopez needs to double up that jab and just step forward. He puts that right foot naturally on the outside of the, the left foot that was in. And then he and then he got that left hand then, almost like a free target. A little bit of joy there from Racine with the right hand though. Doubles up on the jab to make room for the right hand. A little nick there on the corner of the right eye there, was he? Yeah. I don't know how bad it is, but it's just a graze or a tiny little cut. Oh, nice uppercut there, though. And again, good jab. Tough. Better from Wazim in this round. It has, but you still, as we've seen already, this is where Lopez will want to come on strong. Nice short shots there from Wazim. But also a little sneaky right hand as well when he was back against the ropes there from Lopez. Yeah, just 
a trickle of blood started yeah. to come from that cut now. It's not in a bad spot though, and it's no. not it's something they can work with. It's sort of in line with the eye on the right hand side, so I don't think it's going to bleed into the eye. Interesting, I think I think doing the cuts is the former 2 8 world champion from Scotland, Paul Weir, who's uh, I think he won two world titles within sort of seven, eight fights. Phenomenal. Talk about was even going to be in fast track. And that was in an era where people would have 25 fights before they box for a world title. Obviously, based in Dubai, now Paul Weir. Well, with Wazi, fought for a belt with his very first professional bout. But often, you know, if you have a good amateur career, then. Oh, bit of needle there at the bell from Lopez. That, I said it earlier, always look for that exit, you have to. Round four. Round four, eight scheduled. Lopez v. Wazim. We spoke about the needle between the two fighters at the end of the round. The referee stepping in there. This bit of a scruffy affair so far. Neither man really able to find any rhythm. And that's the final warning. And in a close fight like, fight like this, the last thing he wants yeah, is for a point to be taken off. And that was a warning to both men too. There from the team. rather than throwing the ones two look to step in, he's, he's blasting out four, five, six shots just don't win, allow Lopez the chance to counter. But you still got to keep that foot on the outside, you still got to keep moving slightly around the target when you do that. It's a nice left hook on the way out there from Mazim. Leads with the right that time. I don't, I don't understand why Lopez is trying to walk him down. It's a lovely uppercut there from Azim. Yeah, you don't really want to stay within range with a man with a 70% knockout ratio. I, I, just, I just don't see why Lopez is trying to walk him down a lot bit more. The man with, with so much less experience in the, 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 the pro ranks, you want to... You've got to try and bully him a little bit, and I think he has the capability to do that. I'm not sure against Wazim, but I mean in general, you know, and I th so I think he should try and walk him down. He's allowing the man with the faster hands and faster feet to lead off first. Nice flurry on the ropes there from Mohamed Wazim. Decent little round here from Wazim. Yeah. 40 seconds left of it, that'll take us to the halfway point of the bout. Shake of the head there from Wazim as if to tell Lopez that he's not hurting him. It's good from Wazim, yeah, the short little left right hand, and then a, on the way out, it's a nice little left hook. Noticeable increase in pace in this round from Wazim. Yeah. Good shot though there from Lopez, but Wazim then just smothers the work. Well, you called it early in the first round. With a Mexican fighter like Ganigan Lopez, doesn't matter how well you're boxing, something is always going to come back. They'll throw, when, even when they hurt, it's just, it's just they've done it from day one. They'll throw when they throw. They don't think about protecting themselves first. And then when, you, when you've got a, a good Mexican, like the, obviously Lopez has been, maybe still is, so they'll throw when they get hit. So you always got to think that something coming, well, after you throw the shots, you always got to think what you're going to do straight after it. Not just like, I'll land these shots and what do I do next? So, and I think he changed the tactic. Rather than throw one twos and come forward, he was throwing in punches and putting punches in punches like we see here. And that just made it, made it a little bit harder for Lopez to, to counter. All he needs to work tidy up now, Lopez, um, where the aim is the exit when he retreats, not to go too far back in straight line. It's 10 seconds. And they, they, they did a decent job on that, to be fair. The work done to the cut. 
round five. He's had that for a good few minutes of live ring time now. Hasn't opened up, hasn't bled. Okay, it only takes one shot to really make a mess of it, but he's managed that well. And away we go, round five. We'll turn him on the corner of Bazzini. You've obviously got Danny Vaughan, of course, his trainer. We've also got Sam Maxwell, who's one of his... One of his gym mates who's boxing next week, and also if you go on YouTube and type in Sam Maxwell, you'll see one of the fantastic knockouts against a guy who was showing off and got his commitments. Yeah, that's gone viral on every conceivable yeah, platform, has it? And rightfully so. And you know what? Sam's a great boxer, fantastic little boxer, and he boxed terrible that night, even though he knows it. But he got the great finish. That happens though, doesn't it? No, oh, he got a fantastic finish though. Better from Wazim. Lopez spending far too long on the ropes and Wazim looking to take full advantage. More heat in these shots from Wazim, but Pat comes Lopez, of course he does. He's gonna punch his way out of trouble. Well, you've, got a, you've got a guy near in 40, so I guess they've said, you know, listen, put your foot on the pedal now, let's, let's, let's put some real pressure on him. That's good, oh, good response here though from Lopez. Was he shaking his head there to say, oh, nothing's landing or you're not hurting? Invariably a sign that it might be hurting. Uh, I don't know whether it's by design or coincidence, but Wazim is doing all of his best work on those ropes in front of the Pakistani supporters, including <laughs> Amir Khan. And then Lopez. I'm a few shots, but the right hand from Wazim. Nice uppercut there as well. From Wazim there with Lopez on the ropes. Some of these shots do look spiteful as he gets them away. <laughs> Round five, and then we finally start to see the fame power of the Falcon. Good body shot there from Lopez. Again, that long, long right hook. That's the thing. Wazim can't take his foot off the pedal. Once he does, oh, good jab there from Lopez. Yeah, Catch of course, on the way in, yeah. Wazim. So you can't lose focus, can't lose concentration, you can't take your foot off the gas. Again, that shake of the head. That's creeping in a bit more. He's blocking most of the shots, mind you, here, Wazim. But he had a fast start to the round, so it's only probably justifiable that he slowed down a bit in the closing seconds. Oh, oh nice ever cut, though, from Wazim. a few times there just as Wazim is looking to go to work Lopez will just catch him with something slow him right down saw it again at the end of round five the holiday season at Joyce's Jewelry is such a fun and exciting time I mean we have a blast we work extremely hard all year to design create to source the highest quality product at the best prices in today's trends we truly have something for everyone that will make this Christmas season the best yet from our family to yours happy holiday from Joyce's Jewelry at Joyce's Jewelry what Audi's program has done is connected that what is happening at the first team level is tangibly impacting our ability to serve these academy players. They are the future. I want more than one Carlos Vela. I want. Yeah. Round six. So five completed rounds. Do you have Wazim ahead at this stage, Barry? Yes, I do. Yeah, comprehensively ahead, to be honest. But even though Lopez is. It gets to be really competitive, especially in the first few rounds. I think when he ups the tempo, was he? I think he just has the better work, the better work ethic. For now. Oh, nice! Was a nice right hook there, catching as he come forward. Double up that right hand, was he? When he lands, that, when he lands with a solid right hand, just throw it again. Good hook there from Lopez. A good jab from Wazim just to stop the momentum. 
interesting watching this battle for the lead foot. And Lopez just stepping out a little bit to try and stop Lazim coming forward, but. the arena as well people really into this one that's a lot closer than some people expected so I don't think I think you know it's a good test but for a good test in the 11th fight it's, a, it's an ambitious test just the fact that he's box football part of the means that he has to take these sort of fights and I'm sure he wanted it oh, of course you bring in somebody who's got 36 professional victories, 19 knockouts, he's been a world champion, he's won umpteen regional belts. He's been consistently fighting top opponents for at least the last decade, and he's been a pro for 16 years. This is not an easy night's work for a 10-fight pro. That's what was him. should have come back with something there, though, was he made him miss quite easily. Just needed to fire back that right hand. But it's been all Lopez for me. I think it's easy to be the one doing all the work, being the busier of the two. But that's something you learn from a fight like this, and that's something that Lopez has learned over the years, isn't it? When they're on the way out, that's when you throw. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and also trying to finish the round as strong as you can. Yep. It's good there from Lopez. Half of it blocked, some of it landing. Seems trying to get that left hook into play. Managing to slip Wazim as he looks to tie him up and slow him down as well. But those are the tricks you learn in 16 years as a pro. Sometimes when they go head to head, they throw combinations. They throw one, both throw one, two. When they're both throwing a hook, they both sort of step back a bit. And you just think if one of them, whoever lands first here, are clean, yeah, the other one's going over. It's like a lottery. We said the previous round was probably the best we've seen Mohamed Wazim. I think that's the best we've seen this yeah, season I, Lopez. I do, I think as well. I just think you know, he had a real, real effort and Wazim, whether he took his foot off the, or took a round off or just maybe composed himself or whether Lopez just upped up the pace and bullied him a little bit, but he was the, certainly the bus busier of the two. There is Amir Khan. Great to have him Corners here this 10 evening. Seconds. As we mentioned, we've got Billy Joe Saunders in attendance as well as members of the Dubai government. Amir Khan to his wife. Let me take you. Let me take you. Let me take you on holiday. Seven. We're in Dubai. Oh, thanks, Amir. Oh, you're lovely to me. Where should we go tonight? Are we going to the box? The box. <laughs> Either way. Obviously, he's had a stellar career, but I think it's often underestimated how much of a fantastic ambassador he's been for the oh, sport yes, over of the years. Course, yeah. Great to have him ringside. He's draped in the Pakistan flag and earlier. And a great guy yeah. as well. And all that, all the fame. He's been super famous since he was 17. So that you could easily turn you and be a, a horrible human being and just love yourself. And he's been nothing but approachable by everybody, for everybody. This round seven of the scheduled eight then. I think after that last round, Lopez might feel as though there's something for him here this evening. A bit sharper from Waziz. That's a good jab and leaves Lopez short on the return. Just took a little little time. He, he stepped in behind as he stabbed with the front foot and then took a little step out so Lopez couldn't fire back. I'd like to see him pivot though. When he does that, when he throws a little three punch combination, rather than go bring your chest too close, which is just being safe, rather than just pivot. Because then he's still safe, but he can throw again if he needs to be. Another good jab there from Wazim. Rocks the head of Lopez. Good for Lopez. There, turning off the ropes. And after a good round from Lopez last time, the response from Wazim here in round seven. Impressive stuff. Right, you know, nice. there is that split second where they just back off. Where you feel if somebody manages to throw something, 
Yeah, you're right though. This has been a, the, the perfect response there for, for the round taken off, maybe. Yep. Been a good round for him. Good shot selection. Decent work ethic as well. Good work rate. And most importantly, he's been making Lopez miss. But his work rate in round seven compared to round one, Mohamed Wazim has massively increased. Oh, nice, lovely. Again, he squares the feet of the dead, so it stays safe. But I still think if he throws those two shots, then there's a big arc of the front foot. He can go again on the blind side as well. Very strong finish to this round as well. If there was any doubt about which way it was going to go, I think Wazim has done enough, certainly in the last 30 seconds, to take it on the judges' scorecards. Still one round to go. And I think after that, that, uh, that three-minute flurry, the corner will say more of the same to close the fight for that man. Yeah, I think you know, you've got to stay busy, but not, not take any silly chances. So I think when you're darting in with the punches, good moving him forward behind the shots. I, I just think you know, not to be not to be careful, not to get too close and stand too tall when he is close. But he's just trying to what he did, he's throwing the shots now and just tying Lopez up. He's trying to get Lopez there, but Lopez trying to get free, then he's trying to flurry back. But he kept Lopez quiet, and he made Lopez miss quite comfortable for the first time. Corners 10 seconds. Eight the final round. Last round. Live from Caesars Palace, Dubai, the Rotunda Rumble to Mohamed the Falcon Wazim against Ganagan Lopez. Highly entertaining seven rounds so far. And the Falcon has gone through the gears. But Lopez, the kind of fighter, he'll just refuse to go away. Well, and unless was he trying to you know, unless what was he can really put the pressure on him and put him put him in his place. He has to be a lovely right hand from Wazim. Stops Lopez, Lopez in his tracks. But Lopez will want to finish strong. Nice uppercut there from Azim. Good shot. Good working close. I'm so surprised that, that one thing that Lopez hasn't done. He hasn't done that lead uppercut, which is, which is a, literally, I thought it was, it was mandatory for every Mexican to throw. And doubled up the jab. That's good work there for Lopez. I think he'll be doubling up the jab for the taking that light, that softball right foot on the outside and trying to make space for that left hand. Quick hands from Wazim, defending well. And that's something we're seeing in this eighth round that we didn't see earlier in the fight. A good response from Wazim. Nice little uppercut, might have just rocked uh, Lopez ever so slightly there, have been close. Final 90 seconds of the bout. Is there a fight changing shot from either of these men? They're not leaving anything in there, that's for sure. Frantic round this one. Lopez is trying to throw the shot before the referees call them back in, but no real venom in it. Feeling the pace of it here, isn't he, Wazim? That's a good start, that's a good, actually, that's a good round so far, but... Got to dig deep here now, not to give anything away. 20 seconds of the eighth and final round to go. Smart from Wazim, just... Wrapping up Lopez, he looks to build some momentum. Oh, nice one, so left hook, so the again there. Finishes. The round is stronger in the two, looks to back the man up onto the ropes.
and a real tough eight rounds for both men. Highly entertaining stuff. It ebbed and flowed. That man, Lopez, certainly had the better in parts, but we saw some of why Mohamed Wazim is such an exciting fighter, why there are so many expectations of him. Well, well sometimes the, the bravado in him gets the better of him, I think. You know, he wants to stand his ground too much and, and wail away. But obviously, you, know, you can understand that. You know, with seven knockouts in his nine wins, you think that he, what, he thinks he can blast everyone out there. But no one again, I think the hand speed and, and the foot speed is, is what's won him the fight for me, I think. It was, it was a hard fight. You know you're going to get that. You should be a hard, against a former world champion who, yeah. even though at 39, he's not on quite on his last legs. And in, in your 11th fight, then it should be a hard fight for you. And it was a hard fight for him. He had to adapt a little bit. You know, and, and I think it showed a few things that he needs to work on, but also some of his strength. Those darts and him with those straight punches. You know, that, the, the hand speed, the acceleration, the pace. That, that left took a good shot for him. A lot of good stuff there tonight. Eight completed rounds, and two men await the decision. That's with Ricky Wright. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, after eight rounds of boxing, we go to uh, the judges' scorecards. Yuji Fakuchi scores about 77 to 75. Hamed Garib scores about 77 to 75. And Gary Kitanowski scores about 80 to 73. All three in favor of your winner by unanimous decision. Mohammed the Falcon Wazim. Well, two of those scorecards in particular make that fight out to be the close one that it was. I think a unanimous decision is a fair one. Yeah, I do. Uh, for me, I thought there was a, a lot of tight rounds. I just thought for me, Wazim was just nicking most of those rounds, to be fair. So I had to 